Watching TV has changed over time. Streaming has become the new norm. That's why Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast dives headfirst to the world of cord cutting. Want to be on the loop of what's hot in Netflix? Or if it's not a preference, what about original shows in Hulu? We've got you covered. Join us as we fill in the blanks and talk about movies to stream and what show you should be binging. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Television, Television Podcast. Podcast. With your host, Jordan Giles. And Shay Northrip. Northrip. Today we're going to talk to you guys about some sketch shows that you should check out. These are ones that are currently running and ones that are no longer running God rest their souls. Now, to start off the show, we're going to break the ice a little bit. We are going to ask... Do we have any that are running still? We have a couple. Really? Yeah, Portlandia and Documentary Now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know about Documentary Now. That's more of a mockumentary thing. We'll get into it. We'll get into it when I we think talk it's, about I think it, it's a comedy show worth mentioning on Yeah, at It's least. a notable mention at the very least. We're also going to talk about Weekly Westworld. Of course, you guys wanted to hear that. Westworld, man. It's the best. Oh, man. Such a good start. Can't Such a enough. good show. Such a good show. Now... I wanted to open this up. We talk so much trash about television shows. We're we're, we're just like I feel like I'm generally supportive. Bin, I'm like a know? good friend, even if I disagree with something. I'm like, well, that's okay. You guys are gonna get better. Oh, okay. You're kind of nicer about it. I can fill up a dumpster with the trash of, that I talk about. A lot of these shows we get on here. Nice. Yeah, I and, can see that. And um, a landfill, mind you. So. Since we are so critical, and since we are our critics of television, and we're giving it to you guys. We're going to have you guys judge us on show ideas we might have. So what we're going to do is we're going to pitch a show idea and 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 see see what you guys think. So so why don't you go ahead and pitch your show idea first, Jordan? Can can I hear yours first? No, I, you always go last. <laughs> well, I know, so let's not break tradition now. In a world where it's the future, but not just the future, it's the distant future. People have phased out violence because it's not cool anymore. And they've decided to fight their problems and anger through one means. Chess. <laughs> Is this chess boxing? No, it's chess future. Sir, you've been accused of stealing from this woman's store. How do you plead? It doesn't matter how I plead, sir, because I'm about to get a checkmate. <laughs> In a, in a world like where a, all tensions are solved through the intelligence and wit of playing chess. Is this a police procedural? One man. <laughs> Officer Downs. <laughs> Officer Downs, professional chess player. At your service, what can I do for you, ma'am? Well, you see, sir, there's been a murder here. And while we're sure it's an accident because violence has been phased out in the distant future that we live in, we'd still like to do some investigating. Well, what was, what was the name of your main character? Officer Downs. Little did Officer Downs know that not only would he be playing a metaphorical chess game with his, <laughs> with the murderer, he would be playing a physical chess game too. This doesn't make any sense. Why is there a murder in the chess world? So, Officer Downs, in order to interview this woman, I'm going to need to bring you into questioning. <laughs> Take out your game pieces <laughs> because they they inter they interrogate people also with a game of chess. She's chess playing also chess really poorly. <laughs> she must be lying. That's that's exactly the point. He, she's not playing chess good enough. Oh, you no. better start telling the truth. I'm just legitimately not good at chess. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work like that. You see, in the distant future of Officer Downs, people all can play chess very well. But a good way to tell if they're lying or if something's on their mind is to see how well they're playing the game of chess. Ha! You moved your rook to e7. I know something's up. <laughs> Darn it, it meant to be an e6, but there's something on my mind or I'm lying about something. You figured me out. My <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I had an idea. I'm not done. Oh, oh please continue. <laughs> Everything's going fine in the chess world beyond the murderer, but that's just not all that's on Officer Down's plate. He has to navigate future new, new, new New York being a single dad to a pair of orphan robots. <laughs> robots that were programmed to be chess champions but malfunctioned and were left in the gutter 
the futuristic dumpsters, you would say. So now he's taking them in, and while solving crimes with his robot boy, robot orphan boys, he teaches them moves to play chess again so they can reactivate and become the chess champions they were meant to be in order to reignite the sun with chess knowledge. Of course, of course, in order to be a completely fully functional citizen, chess is, like, required. So I think that's where he's going. Well, no, that. we've genetically enhanced our minds. The part of our brains that play chess has been enlarged so much where everyone's great at chess. What about, like... And we've used that to solve all of our problems. What if, like, like in an, in season three, they introduce, like, 3D chess? Like, the chess they play in Star Trek? No, it turns out that they're all part of a simulation. <laughs> oh they're all God. pawns and rooks and queens in a real-life chess designed by people in a much more distant future. Now, what network do you think would pick this show up? <laughs> um... <laughs> I feel like ABC or CW. The Learning Channel, TLC, coming soon to TLC. PBS. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a CW show. What do you think? I think ABC would pick this up in a heartbeat. You would just have to have some really, really attractive actors and actresses. <laughs> but that's not all. A, a dimensional riff opened up, and um, Disney characters were put into the mix. Well, I'm Snow White. I don't know much about chess. She's lying. <laughs> chess busters of tomorrow. Maybe you just have your own channel, the chess channel. The chess channel. That's now, one that I had an idea for. Do you, wait, a little... can you tell me? Can, can you I, can you Rotten Tomatoes me? Can you IMDB oh, me? Oh, man. Like, you would be getting, it, like, a 16 <laughs> out of 100. <laughs> wait, so it's not good? You don't like my ideas? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest with you, bro. You don't think that that would turn out to be a I success? think Rotten Tomatoes would give it a 16. I think that IMDb <laughs> would give it a 7. And I think Metacritic would probably give you like a 56. So, it's not that bad. Robert Egrid would probably give you a 1.5. Robert Egrid? Robert Ebert would give you a really low score. He always gives low scores. Robert Egrid, the bird TV show. That's my next idea. <laughs> it's a bird that reviews television. And yet no one understands how... But he does it more eloquently than the master poets. Okay. For, for a guy who didn't really want to go first, you sure had an elaborate story there. <laughs> you, you know, and I know it. It sounded for some reason so improvised. I don't, I don't understand it either. <laughs> so, so I had an idea for a show. We have this little Puerto Rican guy, right? He's like, it <laughs> is know what I'm going to ask you. <laughs> what? Why? Okay, no, I'm gonna let you go a few more sentences. <laughs> because so so he he's living in normal society and he's kind of like a like very very focused on structure and society and he wants to be a good citizen and he's trying really hard, but he's been having some trouble with like jury duty and like you know like the basic government problems like the DMV and stuff like that. Well, one day a violent revolution happens and he locks himself in a in his basement for like two years and he has like just Is enough. Is he in America? Yes, in America. And he has just enough supplies because he's, he, he's like, prepared for this moment. He has just enough supplies so to last him for two years. he's also a doomsday years. prepper along with the structure. People that are doomsday preppers don't seem to normally be loving the structure of things right now. So, so well, he's just prepared. Yeah. Okay. That, you know, like a good citizen should be. I'm, and, I'm and, sorry for punching holes in something right well, after no, like, my chest I mean, future. The people who love America, right, are usually doomsday pre preppers, right? Like, a lot of... Um, a lot of Doomsday preppers are like, ba especially back in the fifties, were just good old, good old boys, right? Like, you yeah, know, yeah. hardworking citizens, right? And wait, wait, so, can I change the name of my show? What's the name of your show? Pawn to Rookie. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I like that name. So anyway, he 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 comes up out of his like like pit two years later, out of his little little hole. And, and he and he starts to realize like nothing is on flames. Everything is just peachy. nothing is on flames. <laughs> nothing is in flames. There's like a road crew patching up the patching up a uh, like the 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 concrete, and he just kind of real like like you know hole like potholes and stuff. And how there's, like the road collective crew dressed? Are they dressed like normal? No, oh, no. Of course they're in black with like the anarchy symbol <laughs> and, and like insane clown posse makeup. <laughs> they've got 
<laughs> spikes and everything. The future is controlled by juggalos in <laughs> the year 2018. He just like he just like wakes up and realizes like there's no government. He starts meeting people and he's like talking to them and like he just realizes that like everything is just perfectly status quo without a government <laughs> and that we never actually needed one. And so like. He's kind of like lost because now all of his structure is gone and he starts to realize that the world is a better place. And then as time goes on, he just gets better and better and realizes that like, like, hey, anarchy is not so bad. <laughs> and, and he starts to realize that he is actually better off in this society. And every episode starts with like him remembering something awful he had to deal with in the government, being waiting in the DMV line or having to serve jury duty. Yours for feels a town, so personal. <laughs> for a town that he doesn't even live in. Across the nation. <laughs> Didn't you have jury duty? <laughs> I feel this is based on a true story. And then, like, I think somewhere <laughs> around season two, somewhere around season two, like, things actually do start going to, like, you know, he's got his little group of friends and everything, and things actually do start getting, like, really crazy and very Mad Max. And he just realizes that he's a really good survivalist after all, and that maybe life is better this way. Okay, um, so the question I had originally, <laughs> I was going to wait until you finished. I thought you would answer it, but you didn't. <laughs> now I'm still going to ask it. Why is the boy Puerto Rican? Because, w can you name one show that stars a Puerto Rican as the uh, as the uh, main protagonist? Don't high road me. I'm asking why <laughs> there specifically needs to be a Puerto That's Rican. specifically the reason. <laughs> you don't, well, you still don't like seek it out. Like, no, he has to be. What does there have any purpose to that? No, it's just how I imagine. Them. Don't make me look like the bad guy for <laughs> asking why you like just chose something that's, so strongly. It's I feel like I feel like that's the way I imagine him. Like I have a specific. There's a there's a YouTuber that I really like that I feel like fits this character personality like perfectly. Okay. So have you ever heard of Chris Ray Gunn? No, no, and I, I won't look him up. I promise. Yeah, no, you probably hate him. <laughs> I think most people probably would hate him. I don't I, know why I like him. I already hate him. <laughs> I hate him so much. But this would be like the kind of show that nobody would pick up because they're just like, I think the government would get mad at us for this. I think that it would be more just dumb. <laughs> I can, can I say it? Because both of ours aren't good. <laughs> what, what do you think they would rate us? What do you think Rotten Tomatoes and all of them would give me? <laughs> um... I feel like if you took it less seriously, I would have given you a higher score. <laughs> but I felt like there was some heart in there. Well, well, there's heart, but then there's also humor, right? Like it's like it's like Shea humor, where it's yeah, there's yeah. heart to it, but then there's like some really chuckle moments to it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that was funny. I would say I'd give you a six D on on Rotten Tomatoes. On Rotten. Tomatoes. What do you think IMDb and Robert would give me? Um, I'd give one thumb up. <laughs> okay, so we've we've done that. Do do we have enough time? Can we put together our own show together? Let's let's see. So we have almost like like a generator. Mm, like we're at twelve minutes. I I think we should go to break, and when we come back, we should quickly quickly put together a show. Okay. Then we'll get to set shows you guys can catch up. Should check out, and then uh, Westworld. So Sounds please stick good. around. We're gonna come up with a cool show for you guys. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts television podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Giles, and I'm stepping here with the late, great Shay Northrup. Okay, uh, not so late, but still just as great. He's still here with us. We were going to go ahead and make up our own show, so I guess let's try our best and see how this works. Why don't you start us off? All right. In a world where animals are robots, kittens have taken over North Korea. What? <laughs> it's an army of kittens. 
<laughs> when does this take place? Of uh, in the future. In the future. Yeah, they have laser claws. In 2019. <laughs> <laughs> they have laser claws. All right, so kittens taking over. Robot kittens taking over North Korea in 2019. Mm -hmm. Mankind is hidden underground. <laughs> Mankind's hidden underground. <laughs> so they didn't really take over. They just had land that was there because all of mankind's already underground. <laughs> well, hey, kittens could have taken over. There are other animals in North Korea. Yeah, no, so. They're bears. Which would also be robotics. So. In a world where everything's robotic and humans have fled underground. Oh, uh, this is actually sounding cool to me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, kittens have taken over North Korea. Well, so I let's don't know. not give anybody any more ideas because we can work on this our, our own and make a brilliant Sundance winning script. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> in the meantime, let's get on to uh, the big part of the show here. Let's uh, talk yes. about some uh, sketch, sketch comedy to check out. Now, one of the ones, and, and you guys, it's a little bit late now because Whitey's Kids, you know, ended in 2012. But if you ever want a good time, I would highly recommend going and checking it out. It was on Netflix for a little bit. I don't think it's on there anymore. But you can check out most of their sketches on YouTube. It's a, a, a group of um, comedians, Trevor Moore specifically. Uh, get got together and, and they would do a show just completely derived around them and they have all kinds of really, I guess they're kind of offensive sketches. Oh yeah, they're they they've got some offensive ones in there too. I mean, yeah, and it, it's kind of done in a tongue in cheek kind of way, where it's almost ironic, but at the same time, it's a little bit offensive. Yeah, so I mean, in it they have um, Trevor Moore and they have a lot of people. They even got their own movie, Miss March. I don't know if you guys. Yeah, no, that that's one. pretty good. Um, one of the things is like Trevin Moore started out with a comedy show on like public television and it got canceled actually because it was too much for people. And so then he actually went to film school where he found um, like like Sam Brown and Zach and, and some of the other guys that are on the show. And it's really funny because they did like um, they, they did like um, rafts together before the show got started. And uh, the the reason they got called the whitest kids you know is because they did a, a freestyle rap uh, session on a subway, and one of their friends said that they were the whitest kids they know. So that's how it like got the name of the show. It's kind of interesting. If you really want something worth your time, I really I highly recommend the whitest kids you know. Can I say that Trevor Moore, his parents were actually um, former Christian folk rock singers. Really? Yeah, and they were pretty successful in the 1980s with their single "Love Song for Number Two. Interesting. Yeah. So um, they uh, ranked as the number two Christian rock song in the USA. Wow. Yeah. The, I've it, probably heard that song at some point. I'm sure. I'm sure. It, me, me being from the South, I have too. But um, yeah, so Trevor Moore was a hilarious guy. He and, still does stuff and he, he still, still does, Yeah, He's got a couple albums out. And if you really want to listen to some kind of funny music, I, 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 I recommend giving him a listen. You know, Trevor Moore also, he was, um, not a Trevor Moore, Why Just Kids You Know, that was something, one of the shows that I kind of grew up with, just like, it, like it really did influence me watching it. I thought, well, this is the funniest thing on television. Right. And when it's not funny, it only takes three minutes for it to be, become funny again, you know? Right. Like, I remember there was one, because there, there um, a lot of people like to say that it's a lot like um, the old show, uh, Monty Python, right? The Monty yeah. Python show. And it's funny because they actually wrote one of the writers of Monty Python like, hey, do you think you could write us a sketch? We have a sketch show. It's on IFC. Could you please maybe like write us something so we can do it? It would be really cool to collaborate. And they sent them a, a rejection letter, like a, like a rejection letter. And there's a scene where they're sitting down at a table just reading the rejection letter. <laughs> yeah. And that's the skit. And they're like, there's your Monty Python skit. <laughs> They, they they were very clever about things, and then they ended their show with the Civil War on drugs. Yes, which was hilarious to me. I it I was a show that like on every drugs. once in a while there was an episode, and I just didn't feel too strongly about it. But that's the beauty of sketch comedy, right? I mean, it's the next miss. one can be just as great. Everything's hit and miss. You know, and, and some of their earlier seasons were really funny. Their their earlier seasons are a little bit harder to find, unfortunately. I uh, I think that well, I, I got them all on iTunes. So that, that's helpful for me. Oh, really? You nice. Know, European history, 1776. D did you remember that? That was one of the first episodes for it. No. Oh, they never. Mind. I haven't seen much of season one. I've seen most of season three, season four, and season five. Like I didn't get to see much of season one and two. 
Well, we're gonna have to. You're gonna have to come over. We're gonna have to make a, a viewing party out of that because that was a really fun Sounds show. Like a good Still idea. is. Now, now, what's a sketch comedy show that you would recommend to the audience? I would say one of my favorites is that Mitchell and Webb look. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Have you um, have you seen a lot of it? I've watched a little bit, and some of it I think you've actually shown me. Yeah. So the people who made Pe uh, Peep Show. Um, David Mitchell and Robert Webb. Yeah, they're great. They're hilarious. Yeah, they have their own sketch show, and it lasted four seasons. And some of the funniest stuff I've seen. Some of, and this comes from this is a British sketch show. Yeah, just so you know, um, there's definitely a different style to it. But I feel like some of the most clever things I've seen in sketches, like oh god, how could I have ever thought of that? That's so funny. Like the super, the very first episode, it had the um, adventures of two superheroes that were partners together. The BMX bandit who has all these cool BMX tricks and can do all these great things with a BMX bike. And also the angel summoner who can summon hordes of angels to fight for him. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, like, they do such a great job just making things. It's either, like, so clever or it's just it's spot on. Like, oh, yeah, that's perfect. So I think Mitchell and Webb, I, I think that might be my favorite sketch show that I've seen. It's something that I can watch over and over again. And for those of you that love sketch comedy, they even have their own recordings. They have radio, a radio show. Oh, really? That Mitchell and Webb Sound, which you can also find on iTunes. And listen to that. It was so much fun, too. I can listen to that on an entire road sh um, trip. I was about road shift. Uh, back and forth, just listening to the same stuff. I think there are things... Uh, they have the ability to kind of keep making you laugh as you go through. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it has a lasting effect. It doesn't get old. Now, one of the shows that I find kind of hit and miss in the sketch world, do you watch a lot of Portlandia? Yeah, I, I, I love Portlandia. I like Portlandia for some of their sketches, but then it's, it's one of those shows that it'll either be, like, really, really funny or kind of, okay, that was kind of funny. So this has uh, Carrie Brownstein and Fred Armisen. And it's the show, and it's just kind of revolving around them. There are a few other characters in it. Um, one of the guys from uh, Twin Peaks is actually frequently in the show as the mayor. And seeing those two do the same thing over and over again, it gets a little old over time. But the more recent seasons have really picked up. You know, they've kind of gotten more sketches. Got They're doing idea. a lot of... What, what were you going to say? Let's recommend, for those of you that are like, oh, what sketch show should I watch? One sketch that you can look up yourself, watch it, and see what you think for each one. Like for um, that Mitchell and Webb look, if I can go back, Number Wang. Google Number Wang, watch the Number Wang sketch. There's several of them. That would be my one just to get you started. Really, if you just watch an episode, that's going to do it for you. But The Grapest for Whitest Kids You Know. I feel like that would, yeah. That's that's or, like the funniest one. That, that was the funniest one for you? It's up there. It's up there. That was the one that got me. Hey, um... The whitest kids you know that's so hard to pick from. There's so yeah. many funny. The grapest one's the one I usually show people first because it's one of the ones that anybody can get behind. Either that or Sex Robot. Sex Robot. I remember that one. That's very absurdist where it's just. <laughs> He's made of sex. <laughs> Sexing up your town. I, I have to like we have to throw a disclaimer in with sketch shows. View, I mean, not safe for work, some of the stuff with the language. Not like, safe for work, not safe for your kids. There was also the um, the teaching a whale to jump out of his tail. I think that was yeah. one that was really fun for me. That, that was, was one that I would show everybody which, because it was so long and it just felt like it kept building up and it didn't lose any momentum. No, no. So with Portlandia, I think Women and Women First is my favorite. Me, it would be the, one of the, from one of the first season, Put a Bird on It. Yeah. yeah Put a Bird a on one. It was... Um, I, okay, so fun story about that. I saw that, and I loved it so much. And I was working at the courthouse at that time uh, in Louisiana. And so I got, like, 20 packs of bird stickers. And after showing everybody else, it was like a summer – it was like a program, you know, for use to go work there. Mm -hmm. um, we just started putting bird stickers on everything in that courthouse. There were bird stickers on the phone, bird stickers in the bathrooms. There's bird stickers on all five floors of the courthouse – and to this day, if you go to the courthouse there, you'll still find an occasional bird sticker put on somewhere. That's hilarious. Well, yeah, everybody – we, we didn't do it like vandalizing. We asked, like, might if we put a bird sticker here? And I feel like they were – they said yes, but at the time I feel like if they knew the sheer amount of bird stickers that were, we had, they would have said, actually, limit it to, limit it to. <laughs> because they, they've taken down most of the bird stickers, but 
You'll you'll still see one pop up every once in a while. That's funny. Uh, with with Portlandia, like 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 I said, some of their sketches are hilarious, and some of them I don't think hit the mark as much. Later on, it got a lot better. Um, another sh- uh, show that I really like. I don't know if you could call this a sketch show. I've talked about it before. The Snuffbox. Ooh, Snuffbox. You actually showed that one to me. It's kind of a sketch show, but kind of not because it's linear. And the characters all interact with each other, well, but that's there's also like kind of like Mr. Show, it. which is something we can get right. to. Right. Well, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Show is great. Yeah, that's. I'm really glad you liked that one. I I loved it. So it, it's one of those things where each sketch will connect to the next one. It'll be like point A. If sketch A doesn't make sense with sketch C, but sketch B makes sense with point A and point C. Right. Yeah, so it's like, uh, oh, speaking of pizza, here's that same pizza guy in his own sketch. Now, I think my favorite one from Snuffbox, though, is the the, the, the girlfriend test. So it's like it's set up where you've got um, um, the main character and he's sitting down to lunch with a lady. And it's going really well. And she's like, I think I really like you. And he's like, I think I like you, too. We shouldn't kiss until we get married. Which should be tonight, and we should. And then he goes on this long list. of I things can kill that a pig, would, and you can cook it. I don't know if you can cook, but I'll kill it with a stick. And then, like you know, he's got like this long list of things that would just scare anybody away. She gets up and leaves, and so like you've got like your DMD driver come up, and he's just like, "Now what did you do wrong?" And he's like, "I guess I said kill a pig with a stick." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah you did that right. You you did the I like you part, okay? Yeah, but." I have everything after that. And that's really... like a reoccurring theme in the first episode. Like there's one where he's like he like lets he's he's letting this lady out of his car and he's like, I think I'll wait here and see, you know, if if anybody comes up on you. It's a bad neighborhood, so I'll wait here till you get in your house. And so he's sitting there and these like four guys come out in ski masks and she's beating them all up with martial arts. And he's just sitting there watching eating popcorn. And then, you know, she he waves to her, she waves back, and she goes in the house, and then he pops up from behind the scenes like, now what did you do wrong? You waited for her, which was good, but then <laughs> she got attacked. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Uh, there's a couple other ones. The guitar skit's pretty funny, too. What other what other shows would you recommend? Do we, do we have time, or are we about to have to go? Uh, we have a little bit of time. I was going to say Mr. Show. I think that's a staple of it all. Mm. That's a hard one to pinpoint what sketch I would recommend. There's for a lot in there. Um, I like the lie detector test one. I, I think that, that one's pretty funny. I, I showed you that before we came in. So Mr. Sketch also, each sketch is kind of connected to each other. And it even really, they even released a, a comeback with it on Netflix, you know, a few episodes with Bob and David. So nice. if you want to see Bob Odenkirk from Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. David Cross from, I mean, so many different things. He's been on a lot. He's, he's, he, those guys are busy dudes. They're very busy dudes, yeah. Um, definitely check out um, Mr. Show. Honorable mention, check out Documentary Now. Documentary Now by, <laughs> that one. Has Fred Armisen from Portlandia. I like it way better than I like Portlandia. Bill Hader. Bill Hader. It's not necessarily a sketch show. It's just a series of mockumentaries on documentaries that you may recognize, such as Hero Dreams of Sushi, Mm -hmm. such as um, Grey Gardens. Grey Gardens was the best. Did you like... I think here... um, Juan Likes Rice and Chicken was my favorite. But did you get to see that one yet? I, I haven't watched much of season two yet. Season Juan Likes Rice and Chicken. Have you seen the original Hero Dreams of Sushi documentary? No, no I have not. I was showing um, Tony, the girlfriend, and oh, uh, I was showing her, and I actually, we watched the entirety of Hero Dreams of Sushi just so we can see Juan Likes what Rice and Chicken and just appreciate its entirety. I think it's a show that does such a great job of talking about different, you know, um, documentaries that it's worth watching the documentary they're making fun of. Oh yeah, just to get it, and that really says something. Oh yeah, and I love the way they open it up too, like with that the the lady presenting Helen the, Mirren. Yeah, yeah, it's great, good stuff. Now we are coming up on a break. When we get back, we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about Weekly Westworld. Sounds good. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. 
From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. I'm here with Jordan. I'm here with Shay, Shay Northrup. And we're going to talk to you guys about some Westworld. So Westworld, everybody knows about that, right? I mean, oh, yeah. anybody that's listened to the show for more than two weeks, I mean, we can't stop talking about it. So good. Well, the, re- the most recent episode is episode five, um, and, and very, very interesting. I think, um, what's it called? Many people are calling it the orgy episode. I, I think that's an accurate name. <laughs> now, I watched this with my friend Josh, and, and he w- he's really into the whole... He likes westerns and stuff, but he's really into the whole science fiction thing. He made a science fiction uh, short film, for gosh sakes. And and he loves Westworld. And, and even coming into it at this point, he's still able to follow what's going on. He's only watched episode one and five. And um, one of the things I think is really interesting about this episode is sometimes you forget that you're watching a science fiction show. Sometimes I feel like I'm just watching a Western and then I realize, oh, wait, those people that that guy just killed, they're not real. I think, yeah, it really goes to show how immersive the world is that you're not even in this fun little game that they're playing and it still feels like you're watching two different things at the same time. I think one of the coolest things about it is the fact that, like, differentiating between the real world and the fake world can be a little bit trying at times. Like that scene where they hold up that caravan of nitroglycerin for a minute. I was like, Whoa, this is really dark and deep. And this is really showing the characters true colors. But then I realized, wait a second, only two of them are real. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the things that like, there are these constant questions that we're not really so sure about. Like, I think that really also takes into you you take into consideration what is real on this show. I mean, because mm -hmm. you have people like Dolores, which is a robot that is becoming very self. It's a self awakening for her. Well, and even the, uh, the owner of that, that bar slash brothel. Yeah. She's becoming very self aware and she keeps getting hit in the same spot because she's hurting herself. Yeah. And at, at the end of the episode with the bird and her and it was crazy. <laughs> so uh so uh, several characters in the show are starting to kind of realize what this world is, mm-hmm. which is nothing real at all, and they're starting to become aware of their own, you know, surroundings of what people are saying, whereas before they weren't progr- they were programmed to just ignore anybody saying Oh, this is such a neat park, or whatever. Or, right. Oh, well, this, there's also how like real they look. A question to, to be begged in this episode is how far can the robots go to hurt you? Yeah. You know, that's something. There's a lot of little details we don't know, like what exactly these robots are made out of. If you were to strip them down, what do they look like on the inside? Like, there's a lot of different theories and themes that we just don't really know. Like, we see that part where what what's his name was getting strangled by one of them, and yeah. then they're beating him up. Like, how far can they, they take it with you? Well, I, I think that as we saw through whenever the guy was getting locked up in jail, the man in black, yeah, that they kind of are aware of what will happen, and that they'll kind of, you know, oh, we'll keep him in there for two days, and then we'll let him out. You know what I mean? Right. Where I think that they're constantly, like, taking things to the edge as far as they can go, but eventually will stop. Kind of like how in uh, that weird news episode where we're talking about that haunted house, it's kind of yeah. the thing I'm feeling. You know, they can't they can't kill you, but they, they can, can hurt you. They can definitely hurt you. And as they were mentioning before, the further they get out of the center of the park, the more dangerous things become, the more wilder they become. Yeah. And that's as we saw from the town of Pariah, which, wow, it's so cool to see the different civilizations inside this park. And seeing right. how big it really is. Well, and it's it's great to watch Dolores unfold. We get to see her in the parade, start to kind of get a better picture of what's going on with her, and then like that whole sit down with the voodoo lady. Yeah, was a very a very interesting. We're starting to get to know a little bit more about um, that gentleman and his coworker, and how his coworker is really just kind of a scummy dude. I think that what's really interesting about everything that like just everything about this show that just makes me go oh holy crap, is the whole idea that this is getting bigger and this is getting epic. And with 
each character that they're introducing and they're giving screen time to, there's not somebody that I'm like, oh, no, enough of him. I'm getting tired of him. Oh, exactly. I'm every single so character. interested in everybody. They're pulling off, like, a masterpiece. Oh, I agree. Um, I really hope that it, it, it ends well. I hope that the third act is strong because, like I've said in the past, um, Mr. Nolan is a little bit guilty of having weak third acts. Yeah. So I'm really hoping that like he can pull this together because I like his work. I'm, I, that's just something I've noticed in the past. So I'm hoping that this can maintain its greatness. You know, we're so early into it. Also, um, regarding the orgy scenes, apparently that was very hard to pull off. They oh yeah, need chore choreo choreographers to be around there and just check out. Like, okay, you stand here, you stand there. Everything was very meticulous in how it was placed. Oh so, yeah. It's interesting when you see something that mighty that you you let that just pass by the amount of detail that they had to well, work. To it put reminds that into me that. of things like uh, Caligula and um, um, what's that other movie? Um, Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah. You know, like it, like it's it's just kind of like really crazy that they were able to pull it off, and it was pulled off in such a eloquent way. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Yeah. Great show. You guys should definitely check it out. And uh, we will definitely be doing more Westworld in the future. I think this is a show that um, definitely needs to be followed and, and looked deeply into. Each episode, I think, is worth a rewatch. And every time you watch an episode, I feel like you, you just learn a little bit more. I'm very curious about this maze. You slowly become a better person and more self-aware. <laughs> and on that, uh, we're going to cut the show to a close. I'm Shane Northrup. I'm Jordan Giles. I hope you liked our um, improvised... <laughs> Or not so improvised. Uh, our, our TV, our yeah, TV. Our, our TV show plots, and I hope that if we do get picked up on HBO or, you know, ABC, whoever wants to take us, they really recognize the genius of a future chess world or a Puerto <laughs> Rican kid who can who realizes anarchy is really not that bad. Felt so personal. I'm gonna have to say it again, but. Yeah, that was our show, guys. Uh, until next time. So if you liked our show, oh, yeah, you can find us on SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, GoldenStateMediaConcepts.com. And please, if you liked our show ideas and HBO and the TNA and all of you little companies, if you want to like pick up our show, you can reach us at our Facebook page and Twitter page. So thank you. GSMC and Television Podcast. So please rate review subscribe subscribe um and uh stay saucy stay saucy there we go you've been listening to the golden state media concepts television podcast part of the golden state media concepts podcast network you can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com download our podcast on itunes stitcher soundcloud and google play just type in gsmc to find all the shows from the golden state media concepts podcast network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program